we honor you, Lord. And we say there is no one who is like unto thee. You are the King of kings and you are the Lord of lords. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Father, thank you for the opportunity to be in your presence. Thank you for a good day like this. It is all by divine selection and by divine election. It is not by might, nor by power, but it's not by your spirit. Father, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you that today we are counted among the living. Thank you for your divine provision. Thank you for your divine protection. Thank you for your divine presence. Thank you for your divine power over our lives. Thank you for providing for us every blessed day. We are so, so grateful unto you. Daddy, we are about to hear your word. We pray that may you prepare our hearts and our minds and our spirit to receive your word. May the word that we are receiving today never return to you the same way. But let this word transform our lives and draw us closer to yourself than never before. Father, we bless you and we honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning, as the Lord has directed, I'm coming your way once again with Divine Wisdom Hour broadcast. And I believe that your life will never ever be the same. Make a date between 7 to 8 every blessed morning from Monday to Friday. And you shall be blessed. God will have a word in season for you. Before I go into the word, I want to give you this announcement. Our annual 10 times better summit is coming on from on the 8th to on the 12th of July. Please make a date with us. And the theme is divine laws. Divine laws for exploits. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Divine laws for exploits. Please make a date with us. You can listen to us on the radio, the radio app, Divine Wisdom Radio. It's an online radio. Please, you can go to Google Play Store and download and install the app. It will, be, it, will, it will help you to be able to receive the streaming live whilst we do it. More so, you can also meet me on the Facebook Live, either on Albert Ayete on my timeline, or go to the church page, Divine Wisdom Ministry International, and it will also be streaming there live. And you shall be a partaker of it. Hallelujah. If you are there as well and you also want to sow into the conference that is coming on, Divine Laws for Exploit, you can also give a call on 0277 or 055 Maybe you want to sow a seed into it. Please do that and God will surely, surely bless you. Hallelujah. Today, I'm doing part two of what I started and I've entitled, Let's Stop Playing Games with God. This is the part two. Hallelujah. And the part one, I made a session that whenever we say we are playing games with someone, it means that we are taking the person for granted, we are not being serious with the person, and we are disrespecting the person blatantly. We are playing games with that person. And I said that many of us see God as a blind person cripple, sick class, seeking somewhere who does not know anything. But I quoted the scripture, Genesis, Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7. The Bible says that, be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, so shall he reap. I want you to know that there are three laws that rule the world. The man-made law, the natural laws, and the supernatural laws. The man-made laws must be enforced by a man. By the supernatural law and the natural laws, they, re they enforce themselves. They have their punishment and they have their reward within them. But with the man-made law, man must enforce the punishment and the reward. But many at times, in the man-made law, if you should look at it critically, you will see there is a natural law and a supernatural law in it. The last time I checked, I learned that the Constitution of America 95% of it was written from the Bible. So though it may look like a natural law, it may look like a man-made law, but it has supernatural connotation. So in this thing that I'm talking about, that let's stop playing games with God, it has supernatural connotation. God is spirit. And did that worship him, must worship him in spirit and in truth. I want you to know that God is omnipotent, is all-powerful God. I also want you to know that God is omnipresent. Is everywhere. And God is omniscient, which means God knows everything. Hallelujah. So we don't have to be playing games with God. Don't let us be too familiar with God. And we shouldn't be familiar with church. Because we can speak the church language. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 
we are making jokes with God. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a mouth sweat, so shall he reap. And I started a few worrying examples. An elder is sleeping with the girls in the church. You are making mockery of God. You have to come and stand there and you lift up your hands. The church is a place where you are being perfected. So you can't be in the church and be worse off. Some people have testified that they were bad in the world. When they came to the church, they even became, became worse because of the type of people they came to meet in the church. Some people get, get to the church and all they do is gossip. You are playing jokes with God. You think God will never know what is happening to you or whatever you are doing. Like I said, a choir master sleeping with the ladies in the choir with impunity, without feeling any form of remorse or any regret, God is watching you. When you play games with God, the reward and the resource is not palatable at all. An elder deliberately stealing church money, a worship lady sleeping with guys around married people in the church, and yet come and stand there and say, lift up holy hands into the heavens, you are deceiving your own self. You cannot deceive God. You are deceiving your own self. A youth leader, that youth has been entrusted in your hands. People who want to find their place in destiny. Junior high school, senior high school, and now you have taken your, your time to have things on them. And you are sleeping with them and because they respect you so much you tell them god said god said and they are following you god will ask you one day he said be careful you destroyer when you are finished destroying you shall also be destroyed if you're a pastor and you are deliberately manipulating people controlling them you are playing games with god or you are saying that god is not that powerful some people have been saying oh god is not that powerful if god is indeed powerful why am i still alive it's just a matter of time jesus cursed a fig tree that same day the fig tree looks so powerful Nothing spoil. The following time they came there, it was withered off. So when God says you will die, the fact that you don't fall and die right now, doesn't mean you have not died. And that is the reason why we must not be playing games with God. You have been doing all these things, say, if God is there, why is that the last time I stole the money? God didn't do me anything. If God is there, why is that when I did this one? God didn't do it. God is only giving you a chance. But remember, when you sow a seed, it may not germinate and bear fruit the same day. By the time it will be bearing fruit, it is so entrenched that you cannot even approach that seed. That's why many of us are suffering certain things right now and it's getting difficult for you to get out of it. But so ever a man sow it, so shall he reap. I pray that God will have mercy on us. God will have mercy on us. And I said to a young lady, I said, I beg you, young lady, as you listen to me right now, you know you are sleeping with someone's husband. And you also will pray, God, give me my own husband. How can God give your own husband for you to enjoy when you are holding on to someone's husband? Please, for, leave that married man alone. Let that married man go back to the wife. So that God will also open doors for you. You cannot be having water in your cup and say, God, add wine or give me wine. No, leave the water. Let the water go. Leave that married man alone. It doesn't matter what is happening in their family. Don't be a partaker of it. Whatsoever God has joined together, let no man put asunder. So I give the examples. I'm going to give you six examples of people who played games with God and what's really happened to them. And the first example I cited was the example of Adam and Eve. God gave them the laws. And it's also only one. He said that of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat. But the Bible says that when the devil came, he fell to that temptation. And when they fell, they went to hide. And when God said, Adam, where are you? He said, Daddy. He said, I heard your voice. And I was afraid. He said, Ah, why? Have you, have you done what I asked you not to do? And he started giving excuses. He said, The woman you gave me. The woman also said, The serpent in that order. And I call it the blame game. Stop playing the blame games with God. I, I, I'm cheating on my wife because she's only giving birth to only girls. And I need a boy. Do you know how to create a human being? Whenever I hear any man say that, I see that man to be very, very immature. Why? Because even that sex is being determined by your sperms. Not the ovaries of the woman. So why do you blame the woman for giving birth to only girls and only boys? Why? Uh, I'm cheating on my wife uh, because my wife gave birth and she has grown fat. The slim girl you are going after right now, when she also gives birth, she also be fat. Be with, have wisdom. Be knowledgeable. You have no excuse. You know, when you have done something and it's wrong, it's better you go to God with a remorseful heart. You go to God and say, Father, I'm sorry, forgive me. By the day you start playing the blame game, you can never change. That's why God could not forgive them immediately. No. Why? Because of the blame game. They were, once you are playing the blame game, you are saying, I am not as false, so I'm not ready to change. But when you say, God, I know 
it is my fault taking personal responsibility the reason why many of us are not going forward in life is because we are always putting blame on someone i'm doing what i'm doing because once i stay in the house my husband cannot make me happy so i must get someone to make me happy if you cannot make yourself happy no one can make you happy stop playing the blame game playing the blame game giving excuses and not taking personal responsibility can cause you to leave the sight of God. And what happened to Adam and Eve after doing that? The, the game, the blame game they played with God. Bible says that they were de- and, and de- dethroned. They were taken away from the presence of God. God said you will die. And there are three types of, the type of death, the spiritual death and the physical death. Bible says that they died spiritually because they were taken away from the presence of God. The beautiful garden given to them. They were sacked from that beautiful garden. I pray that may the Lord never dethrone you because of sin. May you never be dethroned because of unrighteousness. I want you to know that righteousness shall exalt a nation. But sin is a reproach unto any person. When you talk with sin, sin will turn you into a toy. Today, it may look like it is sweet in your mouth. But tomorrow, it will be like gravel in your mouth. I pray that you be careful when you are engaging in sin. I know sin is very forceful. But the Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Number two example I want to give is in the book of Leviticus chapter 10, verse 1 to 3. Leviticus chapter 10 and verse 1 to 3. And I'm talking about PKs. You know, when we talk about PK, we are talking about pastor's kids. Pastor's kids. And you know, in this case, we are talking about a man called Aaron. He was a priest. To Moses and he was the priest of Israel. And this man Aaron had two sons. And they called them Nadab and Abihu. Nadab and Abihu. They have seen their father does all the uh, things, ceremonial things, the ordination that needs to be done. How the father receives the offering and how the father receives the sacrifices and he takes it to the Lord and everything that happens. They have seen how the father has been burning the incense and everything. And because God says the priest who shall be in his lineage, they also saw themselves to be priests before God. That's fine. It's not bad. But look at what they did. And I would like to read. I would like to read, yes. I would like to read from what the Bible says. Leviticus chapter 10, verse 1 to 3. Leviticus 10, 1 to 3. Nadab and Abihu, I pray that it will never happen to anyone in the name of Jesus. And Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them a censer, they are not supposed to do so, and put fire therein, and put incense thereon, and offered strange fire before the Lord. Strange fire. The offering of strange offering. Strange fire before God. They are not supposed to do so. And the fire must always come from the blazing altar. The fire must not come from any other place. You don't give God worship from any source. Today, you know you are standing there leading prayer, praise and worship. And all of a sudden, strange song, worldly song comes into your mind. And you try to change it and put some gospel in it. But you know deep down in your heart, it's a strange thing that you are offering unto God. The Bible says, and offered strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. God has not commanded them. What strange thing are you offering before the Lord? Whatever does not belong to God is a strange thing to God. Look at the way you even dress to come to church. You are offering strange things unto God. You look at the way the worldly people dress and you bring the same thing to church. It's a strange offering you are giving unto God. What happened? Verse 2. And there went out from the Lord. You know, What they did was the fact that they have belittled God. They thought God, I mean, just a normal thing, ritual. There's nothing in it. After all, my father has been rolling the censer like this. And he has been burning the incense like there's no power in it. The fact that you don't see power running through the electrical wire, that doesn't mean there's no power, power in it. So to them, what the father has been doing is a mere ritual. They took it for granted. The respect for God was no more in it. That is the essence of what I am teaching. The respect for God, to see that God is in what I am doing. 
and for you to give you reverence and for you to consecrate yourself for that thing was not there. Oh, look, I can also preach. Let me also go and bring the Bible and come and stand behind the pulpit. God is after all. It is normal. It is normal. You are playing games with God. All you are saying is that God, I know you can't do focal. There is no power in you. But I want you to know that God has power. If God has spared you, he is sparing you so that you can change. I believe Nadab and Abihu, this is not the first time. God had mercy on them. Verse 2. When they offered straight fire to God, and there went out fire from the Lord, and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. They did what? They died before the Lord. Verse 3. Then Moses said unto Aaron, This is it that the Lord speaks, saying, I will be sanctified in them that come near me. So the first thing is that you must be sanctified before you come before God. But before they couldn't see God, they saw what their father was doing as a mere ritual. I pray that you will not see the church as a mere ritual. I pray that you will not come to church and say, Oh, as for praise and worship, if you just have a voice, now you can sing. As for prayer, once you can say, Kaba, 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 you can, you can just pray. You are wasting your time. You are playing games with God. So you go and sleep with a girl, she can come to lead prayer. Kaba, Kaba, you are offering strange fire before God. And when the fire of God tries to devour you, you'll be destroyed utterly. He said, And Moses said unto Aaron, This is that the Lord spake, saying, I will be sanctified in them that come near me. And before all the people, I will be glorified. And Aaron held his peace. Which means that one, what his children did, didn't glorify God. Number two, what his children did, they were not sanctified. They were not separated to do so. That work was a work. For their father alone. Remember, King Saul lost his throne because he, he gave a strange sacrifice unto God. Because when God has said, wait until the priest, the, 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 the prophet comes, he stood in the gap of the prophet and he did it. There are many things that when God has not sanctified you to do, doing it is just like abusing God. Say, me too, but I can also do it after all. Am I also not a pastor's son? Am I also not a pastor's friend? Am I also not an elder? No, if you have not been sanctified to do so, you try to do so, undermining the power of God, and you have yourself to be blamed. I pray that you will not play church. I pray that you will not play religion. I pray that you will not look down on God. You will not be playing games with God. Like Nadab and Abihu. You saw the answer. Their results was not palatable at all. They were slain by God. They died by the fire of God. May you never die that way in the name of Jesus. Offer the right sacrifices unto God. Offer the right fire unto God. Don't give strange fire. Don't go and bring something from the world and bring it to God. As if God will never know. As if that is all God is, is after. Remember King Saul. He said, kill every, everyone. And he brought some of the fat cattle and everything. When he was asked, he said, I'm coming to bring it to offer sacrifice unto God. And the prophet Samuel told him, obedience is better than sacrifice. It's better to obey than to sacrifice. There's a man called Uzzah. They know that the ark of God must not be touched by everyone. But Uzzah saw the ark. In his mind, this is just a box. So when the ark was going to fall, he wanted to go and help it. He forgot that it was a naked electric wire. The fact that you don't see light passing through it doesn't mean that there's no power in it. And he went straight away and he touched it. He touched it. Merely he touched it. Bam! He was slain. He died instantly. He thought he was helping the things of God. If you have not been sanctified and it is not glorify God, don't do it. Hallelujah. I want to share the last one, then I'll come and do the part three probably tomorrow. I want to share the last example with you and about the man, the, the number three person who played game with God. We've seen the name there, but that be how they ended. The third person who played game with God is called a man called is a man called Gehazi. Gehazi. Remember, Gehazi is a servant of Elisha. Elisha has served Elijah. And Elijah gave Elisha a double portion of the anointing. But when you see Elisha walking around, you won't see anointing written around him. You won't see anything. You won't see any power. Nothing. So you may take him to be a normal old man. That's why the young boy saw him and said, Ah, young, um, bad old man. If you know you have strong, you, you have strength, climb up to the mountain and come. 
They didn't see the power in the man. But the man, as God has given power, he divided River Jordan. But they have not seen it. So they think it's nothing. Oh, as for this pastor, they, they have nothing. They don't have any power. Oh, they can't do anything to me. Good. Because you don't see the power flowing like that. But God, in his own way, we say, whosoever shall receive you, has received me. And whosoever has received me, has received the one who sent me. Matthew chapter 10, 40 and 41. It said, believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe also in his prophet, and you shall prosper. So when God is working through someone, called call the person man of God. Then when you see the person, you are not only seeing man, you are seeing God. When you disrespect the person, you are disrespecting the God who sent him. If I send my children to somewhere, and you go and abuse them, you have not abused my children, you have abused me. So if they say they want to come after your life, I will come after your life. Hallelujah. Gehazi has been working with a man called Elisha. He has seen the plenty of things that Elisha, God has used Elisha to do. Yet, he has taken the thing for granted. He was playing religion. A man came, to cut a long story short, a man came who had leprosy. And Elisha told the man, go and bath in River Jordan seven times. And the man's name is Naaman. Go and bath in River Jordan seven times. And you'll be fine out of leprosy. The man got angry. He left to his own place again. And he was persuaded. He came back. He bathed seven times in River Jordan. And his skin was as like a baby. So he, brought, he was so excited because he was an army commander. He brought plenty of gifts to the prophet. That thank you very much. This honorarium, what you can call honorarium. Or he was laying the apostles' feet. And the prophet said, no, I don't need anything from you. Carry everything back to where you are coming from. God bless you so much. Enjoy. The prophet said, I won't take anything. And when the man left, Gehazi was like, ah! My master has spared this man. This politician. This boy has been chopping our money. If today my master, yeah, then this man has come to church and he wants to come and sow a seed, you say you won't collect it. Na lie. As long as I am in this house, me, I will collect. He was wiser than Elisha. Forgetting that, God speaks through Elisha. He forgotten that, when he sees Elisha, it is God that is working through him. He saw an old, bald man sitting somewhere. So he went to hide Ran after the man. Naaman. He said, hey, Mr. Man, stop. In his, he, spoke, he spoke in his mind. Do you think I will spare you? I will never spare you. If my master can spare you, me, I won't spare you. Immediately you left. He told a lie. My master has some visitors. And those people really need something. So he said, I should come to you to give me this and that and that and that. He said, okay, no problem. If you need one, I will give you two. If you need two, I will give you four. The man gave Gehazi plenty things. Including whatever, whatever, whatever. And Bible says that when he got there, he went to behind the building and went to hide those things there. And he went to stand before the master as if he had done nothing. You know, when you do that, why it is a gross disrespect to God. Gross disrespect to your master. And you know, Bible says that those who are our spiritual heads, they watch over us. Many of us today can lie to a pastor, look at him in the face and lie to him. The results will not be palatable to you. He can only disgrace you. He can only bring you shame. That wouldn't be the wish of the pastor, but that is the principle. And Bible said that now Elisha has Gehazi. Gehazi, where have you been? He said, oh, yes, sir, oh, papa, I've been around. I've been, I've been playing around. He said, really? You still look at me and lie to me? He's playing games with God. He thought Elisha was not having the power. There's no God in the way. It's just a normal casual thing. No man can attend. No. But Elisha said, wow, you are lying to me. Don't you know that once we work together, my spirit is always with you? That's why many of you have been seeing your pastors, your pastors in your dreams. Because God has linked up and synced up their spirit with your spirit. Bible says, for they shall watch over your soul. That's why when you are in the trouble, you don't see another person. Sometimes you see your pastor. He said, people were chasing me. And all of a sudden, Papa, I saw you in my dream. And you came to stop all of them. But your pastor will be asleep somewhere. But there's a sink. There's a Wi-Fi that is connecting. Elisha said unto Eli, uh, Gehazi, wasn't my spirit with you when you were chasing after that man? Don't you know who I am? Don't you know what God can do? The man, you chased after the man and you collected this thing from the man. Hey, Gehazi, is it time to receive money? Is it time yet? Which means there will be time to receive money, not now. I want to speak to every minister of God right now as you are listening to me. 
making gays in the name of God in a crooked way can only bring you shame and disgrace. In, in, in the Jewish culture, when anybody has leprosy, it is shame. It is only shame and disgrace. I pray that that shame and disgrace will not locate you. In the mighty name of Jesus. And Elisha said, Ah, if you have decided to, can you just imagine, if Elisha had a double portion anointing, then Gehazi would have gotten a four part, a part anointing from Elijah. Elijah. Elisha got two, Gehazi would have gotten four. But here you are, you have exchanged the anointing. You have exchanged your, your future gains because of material things. Where are you even going to put them? You are with your master. So whatever you get, we will, we will keep it in your master's house. Nothing. He said, ah, if you have decided to exchange it, then may the leprosy of Naaman come upon you. Leprosy means disgrace and reproach. The Bible says, immediately, Gehazi became as white as snow with leprosy. I pray that leprosy will never locate us in the name of Jesus. If it is not yet time to receive money, don't receive money. Those of you working with senior pastors, please, don't be going after people, visiting them in their homes. And my senior pastor says, Reverend Abel says, I'll come and tell you that today doesn't have anything at all, so you should give me a thousand. They will give it to you. That one, they will give it to you. No to waste about that. But leprosy will visit you. If you're a pastor, don't go and say, God says I should come and tell you when God has not said anything. When you use the name of God to collect things from people, God will disgrace you. I pray that you shall not be disgraced in the name of Jesus. I have three more examples to go, but time is gone for today. I finish the part two of let's stop playing games with God. God willing, I'll come and continue with the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth example so that we can now be serious with God. Do not be deceived, for God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, so shall he reap. God bless you so much. And like I've said, Maybe you want me to pray with you. You know that man of God, I know I have sinned against God. I know that I have played a blame game. I know I've, 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 I've given strange fire to God. I, I, I have, I've, I've played the church. Man of God, pray with me. Wherever you are, lift up your hands. And say this simple prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you as I am. I know I'm a sinner. And I know I cannot help myself. Lord Jesus, I know you are a merciful God. I confess all my sins of the blame game. Of the strange fire. Of the crooked gains that I have gained. Lord Jesus forgive me. Wash me. Let me be as white as snow. Today I surrender my life unto you again. And I rededicate my life. Come into my heart. And be the Lord. And personal savior. Now and forevermore. Amen. Bible says that if you have prayed that prayer. You have been saved. I want you to do something for me. This message must go far. It will save a soul. It will take someone from distraction. So please, like the video, comment on the video, share the video to as many as you can. Share the video to as many as you can. Those of us who are listening to me on radio, share the radio app to your friends. Share the radio app to your friends. Divine Wisdom Radio. And they shall surely, surely be blessed. You can do a watch party also and invite your friends to watch this particular message with them. And I can assure you their lives will never be the same. Remember, God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth. So shall he reap. God bless you so much. And have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye-bye.